Okay, tell me if you recognize this. You have a game, and in your game your character has HP. And let's say you take a little bit of damage, and you go into a different level, which I have a trigger box for here, and then your HP restores back to full. That's really, really annoying, and you're trying to find out a way around that. What I'm going to show you right now isn't the way you're meant to do that, but it is a really nice hacky way to do it, especially if you're going to stick with your game uh, maintaining a single-player experience instead of a multiplayer experience. For multiplayer, this doesn't work all that well. Just as a quick overview, the way I have it set up right now is probably similar to what you would uh, initially do, and that is I have an HP value, I subtract something from that to deal damage, that sets the new HP value, and that gets passed through to a widget to display that HP. The issue is that this is on the character blueprint, meaning that anytime I get into a new level, it actually spawns in a new instance of the character, meaning that it's going to go back to its default value of 100 HP. If we make a new blueprint class and we go into all classes and we make a game instance blueprint here, we can make a BP uh, game inst. Opening this up, this will be a place where data is persistent throughout your entire play session. The moment you start up the game, till the moment you close the game, anything you do in this blueprint is going to stick. Going into different levels, changing your game mode, whatever. So we are probably familiar with the whole idea of a character and a character controller and a game mode. We have our characters, which are instances of a specific type of actor. Then we have our player controller, which is what controls our inputs and passes those through to whatever character we are playing as. And then we have our game mode, which is kind of the rule set of whatever game we are playing. And oftentimes we put things in the game mode that a lot of actors individually need to easily access. The game instance is kind of like even one level above the game mode, because the game mode also is an actor. It also exists within the world and as such when the world gets reloaded or when you go into a different world so a different level that then also resets all the data on the game mode just as every other actor the game instance doesn't have that the game instance lives one layer above that so if we make an hp value in the game instance instead and instead of using our own hp value on the character so let's remove that uh, we go into our get game instance, which will get us a reference to the game instance, and we cast that to our BP game inst. We can now access our HP value from that. And we can subtract something from that, and we can set the HP value just like we were doing before, but on the game instance instead of on this specific character. Now, if you have more than one character in your game, if it's a multiplayer game and such, uh, of course, this is not going to work, because there's only one HP value on the one game instance. So do be aware of that. But the wonderful thing is that with this in place, uh, we can go between levels and the data in the game instance will stay the same. For that, we do need to go into our project settings though first and uh, look into our game instance. Our game instance class should be the one we just made, the BP game inst. And now we can see we can damage ourselves a little bit, go into the different level, and there will still be a little bit of an issue because uh, the HP bar represents a full HP bar. But you can see the moment I damage myself a little bit again, I go back to whatever HP value we have. And that's because the HP widget I have here in event construct, I should do uh, something similar. So I should do get game instance cast to our bp game instance and uh, from there get our hp value and use this custom event set hp bar so that when the widget gets spawned in it already is using uh, the proper values from the game instance so you can see how this code can also make things very uh, spread around and segmented but it does come with some upsides and generally, again, uh, storing your HP or your MP or whatever stats for your character in the game instance isn't particularly the way you should be going about doing things. Uh, but what you can, for instance, do is you can make a system where it is actually stored on your character, but when you load into a new level, it temporarily puts it into the game instance, and then when you load into the new level, you read that data back from the game instance. That is a 
much more reasonable way of going about doing this. And that way, all the information is still on the character, that makes programming a lot easier, but you can still make use of the game instance. What you can also do is you can put functions on here that need to be accessible throughout your entire game, regardless of what actor and what game mode you are playing at this point. So I'm going to switch over to uh, one of my own projects right now into its game instance and showing you a few functions that exist on there that I want to always just have accessible to me very, very easily. So in my game here, I have uh, my save game functions, for instance, exist on my game instance. You can put those on the game mode, that also works, but this way, uh, regardless of what game mode you're in, my game is only going to use one game mode, so it doesn't really matter, uh, but regardless of what game mode you're in, you'll be able to save and load your game. So I have this whole save system here that will save uh, all my data to a slot, and that lives on the game instance. Then I also have an event flagging system, whether or not certain things have happened yet throughout the playthrough of the player. That data is stored in data assets, and those data assets only have one simple bool in them. Data assets are also persistent between levels, as long as you don't reset the game. If you want a more in-depth video on data assets, I have one. I'll try to remember to link it in the card and description below. But knowing YouTube, it's probably going to be in the related videos. Anyway. So here I have on the game instance an array of all of those data assets that hold uh, simple bools for whether or not an event has happened yet. So that's just simply has happened is either true or false. And this function takes in a object to find, so that's a specific data asset to find, and then it gets that and it sets the has happened to either being true or false. And then it sets that array item back into the array. At the same time, I also have a version of this function which gets a object out of that array and simply returns the value of whether it has happened or not. And in one of my level blueprints here, which is uh, quite messy, uh, you can see how that works. I, at begin play, get the game instance, and I cast to the blueprint game instance there. Then I set that to a variable just so that I have easy access to it. And from there, I can use my get event has happened. And I just have a drop down menu. I choose what event I want to know whether or not it happened. And that spits out a bool for me to if it has already happened. And in this case, it is me picking up a key. It destroys the key. So if I exit that room and re-enter the room, that key simply gets destroyed. So I can't pick it up a second time. If it hasn't been picked up yet, I bind an event to it where when it is destroyed, when it is picked up, I will get that same event and actually say, now it has happened. So next time we come through here, this will go to through and destroy that key. This is much more what the game instance is meant to be used for. But again, if you want a little bit of a hacky way to keep easy track of your HP or your MP in a single player game, you can just store those on the game instance and you can definitely get away with that. So it's a nice way to have easy to access and more importantly, persistent between levels data. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas, 